ghost solutions disembodied beings can be trapped a tantric or one who is well accomplished in the occult sciences can do this it is like how even a great sage like sadguru sri brahma was put behind bars during the british era by an immature social system similarly on a different level you can trap these beings too if i have a being with me who does not have a body and who does not need transportation to go from here to there can you imagine how many things i can get done through them but i will never use them in any way my only interest is in their emancipation my involvement with them is only on that level but there are people who use them they will put the disembodied being into some person out of whom they want to extract something now that person will do whatever they want trapping anything has its limitations also you cannot keep something trapped forever at least when the occult person dies the being is going to be released but for most people who are into such occult practices their power does not last until their death it goes before that at some point they lose their hold onto it when that happens these things depart by themselves generally these things will not hover around where that kind of person is they can easily sense it an unaware or ignorant being may get easily trapped but those who are a little aware will not get trapped so easily they know what's what they can feel the energy around them and are very cautious it is a very negative karma to trap and use such beings because these beings are in a way very helpless creatures it is as treacherous as molesting a child moreover it can backfire on you at any moment but usually such people have their own protection systems they take care of themselves in a certain way and do it this is not something that a spiritual person will ever do but there are people who find a lot of pleasure in terrorizing someone it can become a means to wealth for them however usually people who use such beings die a very horrible death it catches up with them over time do disembodied beings need help can they be dissolved yes the difference between embodied beings and disembodied beings is just this when you are embodied you have more discretion as you become more aware you gain more discretion when your awareness diminishes you have less discretion once you are embodied and are here as a human being you can either evolve or regress both are possible for you that is the beauty of having an intellect which can discriminate and choose as a human being if you don't make use of your awareness and discretion if you waste human life your goose is cooked however these disembodied beings can exist only in the level of awareness in which they left they cannot gain or lose awareness they are in a kind of limbo it is a stagnant state like a light bulb it has a certain life span after which it will burn out the bulb cannot choose how long to burn or when to go out it burns for so many hours and then it goes out these beings are just like that they can never evolve nor regress what you have you just experience that is all so even the disembodied beings who are a little aware can do with some help to progress the only reason why they are able to retain their form as a separate entity from the rest of the existence is because there is a karmic structure the physical body has been said but the karmic body is still intact only because the karmic body is intact there is a form and there is an individuality about it they too have individual likes dislikes 
compulsions and desires. But those disembodied beings that we call a celestial beings longed for something higher and they got there. But they too can do with some help. It is like this. Someone longed to be a rich person and they became rich. But only the rich person knows his struggles, his problems. The poor man on the street never understands that a man who is driving a Mercedes could also be struggling. But the rich person has his own problems and he knows his riches are not getting him anywhere. They are not adding to his happiness. Now it is, it is easier for him to understand the need to turn inward. It is a similar case with these celestial beings. Now in terms of dissolving that being, what we do is just break the karma. How do you break someone's karma? Karma is stored on the level of your mind, physical body, sensations and energy. Once someone has said their physical body, sensations don't exist. The mind is there but it has lost its logical nature. So fundamentally, for a disembodied being, the karma is in the energy body. In ancient times, quotations used to wear elaborate jewelry. With that, they played an elaborate game with the men who came to them. Their whole body would be covered with jewelry. The man would come to this woman full of desire, but he would be unable to get this jewelry off. It would take hours to get it off. Whichever way he would try, it would not come off. But the woman would know the trick. There was just one pin, and when she had teased him sufficiently, she would just pull that pin and all the jewelry would just fall off. Both the mental and energy bodies are like this. All your karma is held by certain pins. These pins are in certain point of your body. In a way, we can say they are chakras. Not necessarily only the seven chakras. There are other points too. So all we do is pull those plugs and the karmic body just collapses. All kinds of jokers are talking about activating chakras and doing irresponsible things with them. That is very dangerous. If you meddle with these things unknowingly, it can be disastrous. The chakras are like pins. If I just pull them, I can release you right now. But you will not retain your physical body. You will be liberated, but you will be dead as far as the world is concerned. The same can be done for disembodied beings also. All beings seek dissolution, whether they are aware of it or not. Out of their limitations, fears and misunderstandings, they may think they are not seeking it, but every being seeks dissolution, always. If your body would not fall on our hands, it would be so easy to dissolve you. That is why a guru always waits until your body becomes ripe enough. When the moment of death comes, naturally, he will interfere and do what he has to do. Maybe he will make you leave a few days earlier, but he will pull the pin and dissolve you completely.